in this little video, I will demonstrate how to tie my favorite feeder rig when fishing on rivers for big fish. It can be bobble, big chub, carp, big bream, and other bigger species. I have to say when I'm fishing on rivers for big fish, I want quite a few properties from my feeder rig. First of all, I want that my feeder rig would be very, very reliable, so it must be strong, so it wouldn't let me down. Also, it has to be safe, so if my main line would break somewhere above the feeder, so into the snags or uh, I would uh, get cut off, then if the fish would find my hook bait and would eat it, it would be able to get rid of the weight. It can be feeder or the lead, so it must be safe. And also I want that my feeder rig would be more or less flexible in terms of that I would be able to change my feeder or my lead or change between the feeders and leads during my fishing. Also I want to be able to change my hook link very easily. Also it's very very important that my rig would be very effective when it comes to actually hooking the fish. I want to be more or less 100% sure that when I'm, when I'm fishing, when my rig is into the water, that once that fish finds a hook bait and eats it with a hook attached to it, it will get hooked. That's very, very important. So, so some more or less the properties I'm looking my rig to have. And now let's have a quick look at the intro and then we will come back and I will demonstrate how to tie this rig. Before starting with the rig, I have to mention that all the components I will use in this rig, I will put a link for those components in the description just below this video. Most of these components can be both from China, from AliExpress, and I find most of them are very, very good quality and compares very well to the quality to the components which you can buy in the UK, but they are much more expensive. So now let's get uh, into it. First of all, I was using mainline which was braid. In this case it was again Chinese one and I found uh, this one is perfect for river fishing. It says the diameter 0.20 but in reality it's about 0.22, 0.23 I think. And it's uh, 8 strand braid and it's very very strong. It actually it never uh, let me down during my bubble challenge. So that's my mainline. And uh, on the end of that main line, I want to attach my fluorocarbon hook link. As for fluorocarbon hook link, you want to use something very, very strong and uh, reliable and thick. So in this case, uh, or for my rigs, I most of the time was using about 0.33 or 0.35 millimeters diameter fluorocarbon line. Again, this one is very good and quite cheap as well. Uh, that's a Berkeley one. Also, this one is from China, from AliExpress. I would say this one is even better. Uh, it's called the brand is Ang Angry Fish. And uh, I want to use a shock leader to tie my rig onto because fluorocarbon is obviously very stiff and quite abrasion resistant as well. So I'm using fluorocarbon for those two reasons. If it's invisible to the fish, that's even better. So. I would need to attach my fluorocarbon to my main line, which is braid. But uh, as fluorocarbon is very much invisible, you wouldn't be able to see it. So I will use a very fine, well, not very fine, but black and a, a little bit thinner monofilament line just to demonstrate it. And I will need that line uh, of that line about a meter, a little bit more actually. So I will take about a meter of my fluorocarbon line, but in this case for demonstration purposes, it will be black monofilament line. So I will attach that to so braided line and uh, fluorocarbon 
using Albright's knot. You want to do about 10 wraps with braid. Okay, that's enough for this demonstration. You want to wet your knot just before pulling it tight, of course. All right, that's all braids not in place. So that's our braid and that's our fluorocarbon. Now I will trim off the tag ends. We leave very very short tag end of fluorocarbon and a little bit longer of braided line. Nice and simple. Now that's our fluorocarbon line. And now we want to attach a basic lead clip. I would say the most important thing when fishing on rivers for big fish for a lead clip is that it would have quite reliable and thick rubber to secure your weight or your feeder. So we want to test first of all how the swivel goes into the lead clip or into the plastic tube. In this case it's not very easy so it wouldn't be safe. So what I will do next, I will flatten that little loop with the pliers. I will try to be careful and not squeeze too much. You want to go little by little. That's still a little bit too stiff. That's perfect now. So now we will thread that arrangement onto the shock leader. Okay, we'll have to do separately. So rubber goes first. Then goes the plastic tube or the clip itself. Right, now we have to test whether this assembly will be safe. So the knot must go through the lead clip easy and not stuck. In this case, it's perfect. So you can see if my main line would break somewhere, let's say here, and the fish would be hooked, then the weight obviously would be attached onto the, onto the side, then the fish would be able to slide through the line to the breakage point and get rid of the weight. So it's all good so far. Now I will attach my swivel, which is quick change swivel to my shock leader using polymer knot. Right, that's uh, swivel attached. Now we will trim off the tag end. Of course, you want to wet this knot as well. Right, let's slide this thing in. And now we have our lead clip attached. And until this point, nothing really new. Quite simple and basic lead clip with quick change swivel. Now we want to tie the hook link and the hook link is the most important thing and uh, where I put most of my uh, ideas into it. So for my hook link, I will use the same material, which is fluorocarbon, thick fluorocarbon material. So the same as I was using for my, for my shock leader. So the shock leader and the hook link will be made out of the same material, very thick one, but my hook link will be combi link type one. So it will have a shorter braided section where the hook will be attached. So 
for my hook link, I will for demonstration purposes, I will use black monofilament line so you would be able to see a little bit better. So you want about 80 centimeters of that fluorocarbon line, or at least I notice that it works best at least on the trend when bubble fishing and chub fishing when the hook link is long about one meter more or less. So I will take about 80 centimeters of that black monofilament line. Then I will take a silicone tube with inner diameter about one millimeter and thread it onto the line. Right, now I will tie a small loop at the end of that line. I will use a ringer's loop tire for that. So the loop would be small and neat. Now I will slide that silicone tube to protect the knot and decrease the size of the loop more or less. Just like that. I will explain a little bit later why that silicone tube is required and what it does in this rig. So we have that. And now let's put this a little bit aside. Now I will take some braid, which should be about 0 0.20 millimeters diameter or 0 0.18 millimeter diameter, so it should be a little bit thinner than uh, the main line. So uh, I discovered that this uh, spider wire uh, braided line is quite uh, abrasion resistant. In general, braided lines are not very good when it comes to abrasion resistance, but this one is okay. So for this demonstration, I will use this one. So I will take about 30 to 40 centimeters of this line. Then I will attach a hook onto this line. I have to say that these curve shank hooks probably are the best when it comes to hooking the bubble and these hooks do not get blunt as well when river fishing. So and that's perfect. So those uh, shape hooks, the best ones probably are ESP one, uh, ones, cryogen curve shanks. But most of the time I was using uh, Corda Curve shanks uh, barbless hooks as well. I would say that uh, ASP ones are much stronger. So can be bent, but you have to apply lots and lots of pressure. So the fish most of the most of the time uh, won't be able to straighten out this hook, or, or at least it never happened to me. Just in, when you hook very big snag. So I will grab one of these hooks now. And the best size at least for bubble, for me was num number 10. So I will tie a small loop at the end of that braided line. We'll make sure that the loop is small by putting a needle inside the not and not allowed to get it tight until certain point and when the loop is small enough then I will pull the needle out and make sure that the knot is secure. Then I will trim off the tag end of course. Then I will thread that hook onto the actually I will need to trim off the the end a little bit nicer just to be able to work with it a little bit better. So and now I will tie just a basic knotless knot or attach the hook to this braided line using knotless knot. You want to leave about I would say it will depend of course on your hook bait size but I would say two and a half centimeters so one inch or so the hair length. So let's quickly do that. 
six or seven times is more than enough. Couple times back and through the eye. That's more or less done. That's perfect. Very aggressive position of the hook. As you can see, those hooks are very sharp as well. Now I will grab my my part of the hook link, which is made out of fluorocarbon, and attach that short piece of supple braid to that stiff fluorocarbon. Again, I will use Albright's knot to join these two. That's enough for this demonstration. When tying your own rig, don't forget to wet this knot, of course, just before pulling it tight, as always. We'll test it a little bit. It's very important that the rig is as strong as it can be. So now I will trim off the tag ends again. All right, and that's my hook link completed. So I have about 20 centimeters of supple braid at the end and the hook is attached onto that braid. Then I have quite stiff about material which is fluorocarbon and about 80 centimeters of that. Then I will take my lead clip and I will need to attach my hook link to the lead clip obviously. But of course I will need a little little sleeve just to make sure that once my hook link is that in the clip so it would never ever come out. In this case I will use a I think those are ESP sleeves so but I won't use the whole length of the sleeve I will use just probably five millimeters or so of that sleeve and the rest won't be used. So now I will put this little piece of sleeve on that little loop on my hook link loop Just like that. And then I will attach that loop into the clip and will slide that little sleeve onto the quick change swivel. And now my hook link really can't go out no matter what. Now, as you can see, this connection between the hook link and the weight actually let's attach the weight as well in this case i have large nisa feeder i prefer nisa feeders to anything else pretty much because the way they are they are attached to the clip because the attachment is quite up and then when the line pulls a let's say in the flow the feeder the feeder kind of wants to lift up I, I don't know how to demonstrate it but if i will pull holding on the attachment point you will see the the feeder kind of pivots and that means when it's on the river deck and uh, the flow affects the line and then the line tries to pull the feeder it pivots and then it kind of digs into the ground using this sharp edges and in, in my opinion and I think uh, I proved that many times that when using this uh, NISA feeders you can get away with much uh, with much less weight in them so they are perfect so let's attach that NISA feeder to the lead clip now nice and simple Let 
that's it. So when this rig is in the water, in the flow, the flow obviously affects the main line or the shock leader as you can see in this shot now. So, but the hook link is not affected by the main line at all. So the hook link always will be straightened by the flow. And that means, let's say if the flow would go from this direction, so it would affect the main line and, and it would be a little loop and the hook link always would be straightened in perfect straight line in the same line where the feed is. So let's say the flow attacks from this direction and it washes out the feed and your hook link would be exactly on the same line where the food is. So it's really perfect. It wouldn't be like somewhere at angle. It, it would always be in line with the flow. And that means, as I said, that your hook bait will always be on the same line as the feed path, if you like. And also this means one other very important property as the hook link is exactly straight or in perfect line with the, with the flow, it means that it's extended as much as, uh, as it can be. So once the fish picks that hook link, it hooks itself immediately. And that's really ideal. And I think that I proved many, many times that this rig works pretty much better than anything else. And also it's very important that this rig uh, is very versatile when it comes. For example, if I want to put a bait dropper, I can do so very quickly. I can remove my, my hook link. I can remove my feeder and put a bait dropper in here and just feed my swim if I need to. Okay, let's, let's put everything back for a second. Okay, now you still probably will be thinking, why do I need this little sleeve? Is it required? So what I noticed a couple of times, when you will have a tangle, no matter how good your rig is, you will still get an odd tangle. The tangles most of the time are related to how you cast and how you stop your uh, weight in the air. So still you will get a tangle. And once it happens, most of the time the tangle will be something like that. So the, the hook link will go around the main line. And uh, sometimes, especially if you will have a fish on, the hook link can actually cut, or the main line can cut through the uh, main line or vice versa. So you, you might lose the fish or you might lose the fish and the feeder. So, but when you are having this little sleeve, it helps with anti-tangle anti properties. And also, but if, if the rig is tangled while the fish is on, quite often you won't get like cutting action line to line. Most of the time you will get uh, action when the line cuts into the sleeve and and you just won't get uh, cut off and that's really perfect. And quite often when using this little sleeve, you will be able to get away even after tangle. So it's perfect. As you just saw, that rig is quite simple. But again, it has a couple little touches which I came up with and I think they are brilliant. Uh, at least they did work for me very well when I was challenging myself by trying to catch 100 bubble uh, this summer. Well, I don't know when you will be watching this video, but when I was uh, fishing for 100 bubble on the trend in uh, 2019, then I was using this rig and I think that this rig helped me to catch those uh, 100 bubble and achieve my goal. And sometimes actually I was fishing with other anglers with my mates and they were using their rigs. And what I noticed that this my rig was most of the time was more effective when it comes to uh, hooking the fish and landing them. So most of the time I used to catch a little bit more than uh, people around me. Whether it was to do with the rig or with where the trig was placed, I don't know. But still, uh, I believe that it must be to do with that rig. Uh, you just saw how to tie it. And that's it for today. 
Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.